Evening everybody, wonderful to gather with you around the Word of God and the Moravian daily text from the New Testament, which uh, this evening it runs from uh, chapter 2 and verse 14 of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians through into chapter 3 and verse 11. Now it's quite a rich and densely packed portion of scripture so there's just no way we're going to do it justice in this brief time but look if you are reading these um, verses and I hope that you are please do comment along offer your own observations and reflections and um, then do please uh, join in the discussion Uh, you might want to do so with others uh, from the church in your transformed communities and so on as you consider the riches of the word of God and look, yesterday we reflected a little bit upon some of the circumstances for, for the writing of this second letter to the church in Corinth and the, uh, the, the, the pushback against Paul that was coming from certain factions. Um, and, and within the reading that we have today, um, Paul, at the beginning of chapter 3 as we have it, talks about um, commending oneself and letters of recommendation now there's a heavy dose of sarcasm in this he says are we beginning to commend ourselves again or do we need as some do letters of recommendation to you or from you and this clearly is something that paul is addressing he's not you know fashioning it out of his imagination he's addressing some actual realities that certain uh, purported ministers of the gospel are attesting to their worth um, to local churches through letters of recommendation or requiring those letters of recommendation from churches. This, does this seem to be a, a healthy way? Um, well, I, I'm sure it doesn't seem to to you. It certainly doesn't to me. Paul here makes it really, really plain that actually the, 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 the testifying um, substance of our lives is not um, in some sort of kind of, you know, blurb on the back of the book of our of our existence um what is true and substantial about you or me um you know do you need to 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 pad out your cv as it were with a sense of who you think you ought to be or who it is that you feel you need to be in order to gain the approval of others or is there something more substantial and indeed eternal to who you actually are? Do you have to commend yourself? Or are there other commendations of greater worth um, than that? And, uh, and the commendations that Paul is going to talk about here are those that um, allow for a sufficiency. You know, do you ever feel like you're not enough? There's a thing called imposter syndrome. I don't know whether you've ever come up upon it. Uh, but people oftentimes in new roles in life or positions, um, they have this thing called imposter syndrome, which means that that nagging sense that at some point, somewhere along the line, someone's going to find you out and discover that you're not as good as you seem to be or you're not up to snuff or, or this or that or the other. I, I suspect we've all had that one way or another at certain points. And Paul is making the case that we don't need to, we don't need to pretend to sufficiency We don't need to offer a level of competence or kind of just have the trappings of it. That there is a sufficiency and it's dependent, surprise, surprise, upon Christ. In the the end of chapter 2, he's talking about our our witness and the way in which we speak life into the world or indeed speak death to those who are dying because the, the gospel is of life and death. He says, look... And we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to one, a fragrance from death to death and to the other, a fragrance from life to life. You know, that for those who are in Christ, there's an aroma of Christ. If you're not in Christ, well, there's a choice. Are you going to pursue the life of Christ? In which case, this gospel, it smells of life to you. If you're going to reject the life of Christ and pursue what the Bible teaches is death and decay, then this is the aroma of death to you. Um, And Paul said, look, this is huge stuff. Who is sufficient for these things, he says. Um, He says, look, we're not offering our own sufficiency he says we're not we're not a peddler of god's word you know somehow you know if we put enough of a fee on our services then then somehow we're sufficient no he says look the sufficiency is in our sincerity our commission from god and the fact that we are in his sight and again you know he talks about um 
his own, uh, you know, substance as a person. So uh, the one sufficiency is in regard to our gospel proclamation and the other sufficiency is in regard to, to, to our character, our conduct among the church. And he says, look, f- for you, the believers in Corinth and for all of us, he says, you show that you are a letter from Christ, not just some random person offering some blurb, a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. And um, and so he's making the case here that, look, any Christian, and indeed we understand that to some extent, very truly, very really, every Christian is called to be a minister. We're all called to minister, that is to serve. And whether we're serving one another within the church or whether we're serving the purposes of the gospel in the world, our sufficiency comes not through our eloquence. It doesn't come through human testimonial primarily. It doesn't come through our own skill set. Certainly doesn't come through any fee that we would charge, God forbid. Um, It comes from God. The gospel itself having its work in our lives is sufficient. And indeed then, Um, The spirit, the new covenant, the the work of Christ that establishes us toward God, that is our sufficiency to serve one another. So what is this service? What does it look like um, toward one another? And Paul, he says, look, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. What on earth does he mean by that? Well, the letter, he's talking about the law. He's talked already about tablets of stone and we're supposed to understand thinking about Moses receiving the law on those divinely given tablets and how the law in and of itself, it's not its not a bad thing, it's not an evil thing, but it, it reveals the evil of the human heart. And because of that, it brings about death. Uh, there's no escaping our inadequacy. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory, of his standard, of his, of his perfection. And, and so this, this letter which kills, this ministry of death carved in letters of stone, Paul says, look, even so, it's glorious. What does that mean? It means it carries the weight of God himself. And, and, and it carries incredible weight of the glory of God. But then he says, how much more? The Spirit, the ministry of the Spirit will have even more glory. It, the Spirit gives life. And, and even though the law has found its completion in Christ and, and we're not under the law anymore, that the work of the Spirit through Christ is eternal. And so its glory is greater and it's eternal, it's permanent. Look, this is the sufficiency that God wants to work through you. It's the work of his Spirit in you such that one to another we might serve one another well we might be the aroma of christ to one another we might enable one another to have lives that that are letters of the work of god amongst us don't you want to accomplish this amongst one another within the church what a service that we could offer to one another and it's not just for within the church look the, the sufficiency it overflows into the world such that um to those who don't yet know jesus should they receive him, we can be, as it were, life to them, introducing them to the author of life. This is the sufficiency of God. This is why Paul elsewhere can say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And oftentimes, Christians, I think we would agree with Paul, we're not ashamed of the gospel. You know, it is life, it is glory. Uh, but sometimes we're ashamed of ourselves. We look at ourselves and we see ourselves as insufficient. We have imposter syndrome. We wonder, oh, but what about when I said this wrong or I did that wrong? The sufficiency is not of your own making. It is the work of Christ in you for the good of his church and so that others might know that Jesus is good. He takes people like you and me, wholly inadequate, utterly insufficient, and he makes something beautiful of us. So that beauty might extend from us into this world, 
Jesus is sufficient. He is enough. He is more than enough. He can, therefore, as the Bible teaches us, do more than we could ask for or imagine. So I want to ask you as we close, what are you smelling of this evening? <laughs> what, are you, what are you smelling of? Uh, you know, you might think that you smell of regrets. You might think that you smell of past failures. You might think that you smell of, of fears or anxieties about your future. Maybe the troubles and cares of today. Look, in Christ it need not be so. Cast all these burdens on him. He cares for you. You can smell of him and of his spirit wonderfully at work in his church and in the world which he is drawing to himself. Let's smell of Jesus, shall we? Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you that you are all sufficient. That what you have done for us by means of the cross and your resurrection is perfectly sufficient. You, you teach us and you remind us that your grace is sufficient for us. It's sufficient also that we might minister and serve within your church, that we might love one another well. It's sufficient that our testimony, our witness in the world might be an aroma of life to those who are being saved. Lord God, that you might draw people to yourself through us, not because we are so great in and of ourselves, we know we're not, but because you are so great and you work the sufficiency in and through us so that the glory might reside in us and permeate into our world. God, we want a piece of this. We want a smell of this future hope that we have in you. Help us in this, God. Remind us of it. Enable us to cultivate these truths within us for the good of those around us and for your glory, we pray. Amen. I hope that's inspired you a little bit. I'm going to go off and spray a little of uh, glory deodorant on. Um, <laughs> and we'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you. Good night.